Hello Royals, welcome once again to She's World. My name is Sheila, but you can call me She. First disclaimer out there, I am not an immigration lawyer. Every information that I'm providing here is information that is available to public knowledge. You are easily able to assess it. I went through this process on my own and so I figured I would share it with everyone. Today we are here to complete the I-485 application form. As always, I'm always going to advise you to go to USCIS and then you want to go to the official website of USCIS.gov. You're going to hit it. And the form that we are going to work on today is our form I-485. Okay, form. Perfect. There you go. You click search and then it pulls up the form for you. And it says right here, this is the form. It pulls up a PDF version for you. This is the form that you're going to fill out and then you're going to print it out and sign it and attach it to your I-130. There are going to be three forms that go with your I-130. It's going to be your I-130 form, your I-485, and then your I-864. All these forms go together. I have videos on all the forms so you can look it up and you're gone. Too easy. All right, let's get into the form. As usual, I like to as usual, I like to always open the form itself. I have one pre-filled so it will make this video faster. This cuz this form is a little bit longer. Look here up here, you see the date here. This is valid until 3/31/2023. This form is completely like hugely this form is hugely different from the one that I had to fill during my process. So I'm so glad that I get the chance to do it again. Okay, enough of the talking. Let's go into the form. Right here, we're going to come here and then always it says here, start here. The top version is always the official version for USCIS to put in whatever they have to put in here. And this is not for us either. So we start right here. Start here, type or print in in ink. Why do I say black? Okay, so again, if we don't have an alien number, we're going to leave it here. If you're doing this form together with your I-130, you will not have an alien number. If you surprisingly you do, you can put it there. Okay, part one, information about you. So this is information about the foreigner. So if we, we've already talked about this so many times in my video, is the American citizen or the green card holder that's applying for the um, foreigner who is the petitioner. This form, I-485, is solely for the foreigner who is trying to gain citizenship because what's the name of this form? It says right here, application to register permanent residence or adjust status. Too easy. All right, so here you're going to put your name, Smith, Smiles, Happy. Awesome. And then it says your other names you have used since birth. So provide all other names you have ever used, including your family name at birth, other legal names, nicknames, aliases, and assumed names. All these are names that you've legally used and you can have documentation for. So prior to marriage, Surname was both smells happy. Awesome. Question 3A right here. If you had any other names, if you don't have, you can leave it empty, especially with places that talks about name. I am very hesitant that you put NA because I, I just feel like just let it go. Let it go. So other information about you. Of course, you're going to indicate your date of birth here. And then it says note. In addition to providing your actual date of birth, include any other date of birth you have used in connection with your legal names or non-legal names in the space provided in part 14. So if you have used any other names here, you're going to indicate that. All right, question six. Your sex, so we checked female and then the city or town you were born in, we're going to say Accra. And then the country of birth, we're going to say Ghana. Country of citizenship, you're also going to say Ghana. So you're going to say the country of birth and it's seen on your passport, your documents. All right, moving on. Alien registration number, like I said, if you don't have one, 
you just leave it be. Don't put NA or anything. If you do not have a USCIS account number, you can also leave it as well. Okay, mail and address. Mail and address I put in care of, so your spouse that you're living with, and then you put the address, you live in Austin, and then the great state of Texas, and then the zip code. All right, let's move on. Alternate and or safe mailing address. So this particular section is for um, any, if you're applying on the Violence Against Women Act, the VAWA for women that have been in violent situations or immigration juvenile. So anything that goes into this bracket is where you're going to put the address. Typically, you're going to have an address where you're staying. So that's where you put it. If you don't have anything, you just put NA or you can leave it blank. That's also fine. All right. Social security card. So this question says, has the Social Security Administration ever officially issued a Social Security card to you? It's going to be no. If you have one, that will be surprising. But if you do have one, go ahead and put that here. And then here, if you answered yes, provide the information requested in items, no, item number 15. So if you do have the number, you put it here. Do you want the SSA to issue you a Social Security card? You must answer yes to item 17, consent for disclosure to receive a card. So if for whatever reason you're in proceedings to already get a social security card, you can hit yes. So they have included this. This was not in my form when I was filling it initially. This is an easier way for you to get the social security card whilst you're together going through all these process, which I think this is truly awesome. So you're going to take yes, that you do want the social security, and you're going to check yes here to say that, because remember this, all the information that you're providing, they can just pull this and get you your social. This makes 10 times easier, so you don't have to go to the social security office to go get a social security. I think this is really awesome. All right, recent immigration history. Please provide the information for item 18 to 24 if you last entered the United States using a passport or travel document. So if you entered the country, whatever, if you came in as whatever visa type you brought in and legally entered the country, you're going to put your passport number here. If you didn't use a travel document, you just leave it as is. And of course, you're going to leave this as is. All right, and then you come here, it says country that issued this passport or travel document. So we're going to say Ghana, non-immigrant visa from this passport. And so however you came to America, if you came on a B2 visa, if you came on a B1 fiancé visa, whatever type of visa that you legally entered America with, this number is going to be on your visa. If you look into your, on, on your visa that was issued to you, by the consulate, there is a visa number there, and that's what you want to include here. L place of last arrival into the United States. So if you've been to America several times, we are not talking about that. We are talking about your last time you came to America that you never went back. The last time was in Dallas and in the great state of Texas. Okay, date of last arrival. And so that's going to be the last time you came to America that you never went back. That's very important. So you don't want to include any other dates that you've been to America. Okay. All right. Part one, information about you. Person applying for lawful permanent residence continued. So it says here, when I last arrived in the United States, I, so this is asking you how you came in. For the purpose of this video, we are saying we came in legally. So I was inspected at a port of entry and admitted as for example, exchange, visitor, visitor, way through, temporary work, student, etc. So if you were, you just check this. All right. Then we come here. So we're going to leave, then we come right here to question 26A. Form I-94 arrival um, depart, departure record number. Again, like I said, Usually, first, when you'd come to America, they'll stamp your passport, they'll clip it and give you that paper, the I-94 form. Now you have to get it online. I didn't have this, I didn't include it, and it was fine. So if you have it, you can include it. If you don't, you just leave it blank. Expiration date of authorized stay. So 
on the I-94 form. So because the I-94 form is no longer given at the airport, they're going to stamp your passport. Your passport is stamp is going to show when you are when you arrived in America and when you're supposed to leave. So that date is what they're asking for. And then what type of visa do you have? This type of visa is going to be on your visa as well. So it was B2 visitors visa. And then it said, what is your current immigration status? If it has changed since you arrived or since your arrival. So if you came in as a B2 visitor, a visitor's visa, and you're still within the six months and you're still allowed to stay in America, you put that. But if the, visit, the visa has expired and you have overstayed, you can put here visa, um, you can put here overstayed. So too easy. So either or you can play with this as your situation um, is, if it makes sense. Okay. All right. I'm going to leave it as that and keep moving. Okay, provide your name exactly as it appears in form I-94, if any. So it's still the same thing, basically the same way your name appears in your passport. So you put that here and then we come up here. All right, part two, application type or filing category. So here we have established that you are filing your spouse is an American citizen or a green card holder, and so you are filing based on that. Whatever situation applies to you for this one, we are going to do immediate relative of a U.S. citizen form I-130. Remember, this goes with your form I-130. Okay. So we come down here, and then it says special programs based on certain public laws so these do not so this is question 1f if you come here let me show you this real quick so it's the same continuation remember this is the one that we selected this and so we are not going to select anything with question this particular question anymore question one okay so here are you applying for adjustment based on the Immigration and Nationality Act, INA Section 254, we are not, so we're going to check no here. Note, if you answered yes to item two, you must have selected a family-based, employment-based, special immigration or diversity the visa immigrant category. So these are the options to which you can select yes to this one, and we are not in these ones. Moving on. So right here, it says information about your immigrant category. If you are the principal applicant, provide the following receipt number of underlining petition, if any. So if this, this particular one, if you had already submitted your I-130, which I know that sometimes people submit forms before they know what to add to it. If you've already submitted your I-130 and you've received a receipt from USCIS is going to have a number at the top, which is literally going to say your receipt number. You type it here. And then if there is always going to be a date on there, so you indicate the date here. In the case where you don't have it, you just leave it as NA, not applicable, or you can just go ahead and leave it blank, which is perfectly fine. And then it says, if you're a derivative applicant, the spouse or unmarried child under 21 years of age of a principal applicant provide the following information for the applicant for the principal applicant for this case we don't have children and we don't have derivative applicants as well so we are going to leave this portion blank okay part three have you ever applied for an immigrant visa to obtain permanent status at a U.S. Embassy or U.S. Consulate abroad. So for this one, we are going to say no. And of course, if you answered yes, you have to provide these information right here. Okay, part three continued. Address history. So provide physical addresses for everywhere you have lived during the past five years, whether inside or outside the United States. Provide your current address first. If you need extra space to complete this section, use the space provided in um, part 14 for additional information. So we're going to start our first address where we live right now in America. So 1010 Apple Street, 
Austin, the great state of Texas, and then our zip code right here, and then USA. Okay, so your next address right here, and then of course it's going to indicate that you're presently staying there. So you're going to indicate the date that you started to live at this address, whatever the date is, you indicate that. Okay. I forgot to put 10, 10. So just follow the format that it gives you. Okay, till present is going to populate that for you. And in the past five years, if you and your spouse lived at a different address, we'll say 1010 Banana Street, that's where you lived. And then over here is going to tell you, provide your most recent address outside the United States where you lived for for more than one year if you already listed that above. So it's asking you for five years. If the past five years you lived here um, however long and then the rest of the years you lived here in your foreign address, you put that here. Once you indicate the foreign address, you don't have to indicate that same address up here. But if you haven't, then indicate your foreign address here. So we have 1010 Airport Area, Accra, Ghana, and we don't do states in Ghana. So you leave that, you don't you leave the zip code. And then of course your province, Greater Accra. And then if you have a postal address, postal code, you put that, and then the country is Ghana. Then you state the date that you lived at this address, and then we keep moving. Employment history. Provide your employment history for the past five years, whether inside or outside the United States. Provide the most recent employment first. If you need extra space, part 14 for the extra one. So we are going to say that our time here in America, or maybe if you were home, you were back in your country, you never worked, you put unemployed. If you did work, you indicate where your employment was at. Okay. So this portion continued, if there is more that you need to include, you can go ahead and include it. If there isn't, you can go ahead and skip it. Okay, so let's come here, part four, information about your parents. So this is information about the foreigner's parent. So parent one, you say that your mom's last name is Vote, her first name is Becky, and then a name that she had prior to getting married to your father was Ship, and then of course her Becky stayed, her date of birth, her gender is a female, Accra, Ghana. So your city and your country, you put that here. And then here it says current city or town of residence if li still living. So if your parents are still alive, you put that here. If they're not, you leave that blank or you can put deceased. It's fine. Okay, information about parent two. So we go here to both the father and then Philip is the first name, no middle name, you leave that blank, no previous names. And then the father is a male, the date of birth, the city, the country, and then the city and country again, if the parent is not deceased and still alive. Part five, information about your marital history. So the foreigner applying, yes, you are married. It says, if you're married, is your spouse a current member of the US Armed Forces? So for this video, we are saying no, the husband is not in the US Armed Forces. How many times have you been married, including an old marriages and marriages to the same person? So here we are saying one, this is our only marriage information about your current marriage including if you are legally separated so you want to include your husband's name smith john doe and then an alien number if they're citizens they don't have alien numbers they will have a social so you leave that blank and then spouse date of birth date of marriage and then you come here spouse current spouse place of birth and so wherever your spouse was born you put that here and then place of marriage of current spouse and so wherever you guys got married you put that here as well and then question 10 says is your current spouse applying with you so if your current spouse is an american citizen then no you're going to indicate no they're not applying with you because they're already a citizen awesome okay information about your prior marriages if any so if you've had any prior marriage this is where you're going to indicate all of that from 11a all the way to 16c 
you indicate all of that information as well. And of course, you're going to attach all these divorce decrees or um, if they passed away, death certificates as well. Okay, indicate the total number of all living children, including adult sons and daughters that you have. So for this video, we are saying zero. But if you, if you had kids, you indicate the number here and then you indicate the kids' names and their date of birth and then the country of birth as well. Too easy. All right. Same here. This is the same information continued here. So if you have more children, you can include them as well. All right. Part seven, biographic information. And so here we want to know um, you're not Hispanic, you're Asian. And remember, these boxes, if you don't uncheck them, they just stay there. So you can choose black, whatever your race is, you select that. And then your height and you put your height here and then your weight as well. If you don't know your weight, you can find it. And then you can type your weight in here as well. Okay, awesome. And then your eye color, we chose black. Always remember to uncheck a color if, or uncheck a box if you've checked it and you made a mistake and you're like, oh, I want it gray. Make sure to uncheck it again because it does select it twice, even though it says select only one box. Hair color, we said gray. All right. And then we're going to come back right here. And then it says general eligibility and inadmissibility groups. Okay, have you ever been a member or involved in or associated with any organizations, foundations, club, or anything in the world, including any military service? So if you have been included in anything, you, you're going to check yes. If you have not been, if you have not included in anything that is listed here, you said no. So once again, you're going to come here and list all the stuff that you've been included in and then too easy okay so it's the same thing it just kind of gives you a continuation right here and then you put the dates that you were a member of now this part answer items number 14 up to ATB it is a lot a lot of questions choose the answer that you think is correct if you answer yes to any questions or if you answer no but are unsure of your answer provide any explanation of the event and circumstances in the space provided in part 14 as additional information this is a lot i am not going to go through all of it but i'm going to point a few sections to us so we all get into the motion of hitting no, 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 no. I'm going to encourage you to please, please read this because this is a legal document. So you want to make sure you're being extremely honest in everything you say. Now let's hit question 24 because I know that clicker hands keep going. It says, have you ever been a J, a non-immigrant exchange visitor? who was subject to two year foreign residence requirement. You said no. If you say no, there is no need to come here and answer question um, 24B and 24C. So once you hit no, you just let it go. Unless you answered yes here, that's the only reason you come to 24 to answer. There is also another portion here it says criminal acts and violations. And so you're going to read through everything and every box needs to be answered is either yay or nay. So answer all of it. And again, I know that the clicker hands are going to go, but I'm encouraging you to read everything because we are going to run into the same similar situation here at question here illegal entries and other immigration violations. So 31A said, have you ever um, failed or refused to attend or anything removal status? We said no. 63B says, if you answer to item 63A, yes, do you believe you had reasonable cause? So remember, this is those ripple effect questions where if you're clicking no, 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 you get to that same face. So read it. So you're going to hit no, so you don't have to answer this. And again, this 
question 30, 63C says, if you answered to item 63B, yes, attach this. So you once you answer 63A and you say no, you don't touch it again, you come to 64. Have you ever submitted a fraudulent or counterfeit? So you go through the questions again and then you answer truthfully. And then once you're done, remember it's up to question 80. So let's look at question 79A. Have you ever applied for exemption or discharge from training or service in the U.S. Armed Forces in the U.S. National uh, U.S. National Security Training Corps. So we said no. Being relieved or discharged from any training or service. So you're going to say no. Being convicted or um, dissertation. So right here. All right. So we're going to answer through all the way to question number. 80B, but 80A say, have you ever left or remanded outside the United States? Um, so your answer, you read the question, is going to be no. But 80B says, if you answer item 80A, 80B says, if your answer to item 80A is yes, what was your nationality? So if you did answer yes here, you provide that information right here okay we are almost done <laughs> part nine accommodations for individuals with disability and so here are you requesting a, an accommodation because of your disability so we're going to say no because we don't have but if you do have any disability you're going to check yes and then you're going to follow through with the um, answers to the question select which one applies to you part 10 Applicant statement, contact information, declaration, certification, and signature. So this is the same thing here. We want to know if you can read and understand English. And then so you're saying you can read and understand English. If you use an interpreter, you're going to check 1B and then the interpreter is going to include the information as well. Okay, so here is at my request, the preparer named here. So we didn't use that. We're going to leave that. Applicant contact information, you're going to put your phone number and then you're going to put your email address. Applicant's declaration and certification. And so you're going to read through all of this information, copies of any documents I have submitted, I exact copies of unaltered original documents. So by acknowledging this, you're saying that yes. So you're going to put the date. And of course, you're going to sign here. So these forms are part, one of the forms I have to print out and sign, and then you can attach to your I-130 and mail that in. Okay, so we're not going to do anything with part 11 because we did not use an interpreter. Now, here, um, again, this is all about the interpreter, which we did not use. So that's it. Part 14 right here is where you add all additional information if you need the extra space for that. There is a part that I wanted to show um, real quick, this section right here, part 13. It says signature at interview. So you are not going to do anything here. The only part you're going to sign is at the top when I showed you. But here, all you're going to do is just leave a blank during your interview your USCIS officer is going to ask you to sign it. Don't touch it, don't do anything with it, okay? Awesome, this is only the part that you're gonna sign. So, thank you so much for watching. I know this was a long video, but when completing these forms, you kind of wanna make sure. It's very expensive. The process is very tedious, it's very expensive. So you wanna make sure you're taking that time to go through the motions, okay? That's all I have for today. Stay safe. Thank you for watching. Please comment. Stay safe. Thank you for watching. Please comment, like, and subscribe. Ask me questions below. And if there is more clarification that you need, I'll be more than happy to redo a video. Again, I am not an immigration lawyer. Stay safe. Bye.